great great grandmamas and grandfathers and in fact anybody else who stood up against injustice against this system has become the enemy of that state or that system so looking at the system of white supremacy I know it is in direct conflict with the nature of the African it is in direct conflict of the peaceful grassroots earth and loving people that we were so when we don't take those type of things into effect and in our mindset then we will always be blinded by those Willie Lynch so-called sellout brothers like the ones down at City Hall who don't affect any kind of change they just sit there they sit there and then they're so sad they want to turn around and blame the victims because let me tell you something and I know I'm getting off the subject a little bit but these people are social engineers they're brilliant they're brilliant they're uh, uh, magnificently uh, uh, scientifically uh, expertise down in the sciences of chemical warfare biological warfare uh, 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 behavioral warfare uh, and and these are all sciences okay so when you when you ever you get through when you realize that there are certain conditions that you can sit upon a human being that will allow him to behaviorally act out of his nature and out of his construct and out of his org field and out of his mindset then you know that wow there's some mass shall I say brainwashing or or, or uh, yeah brainwashing that has taken effect so that's what you see in the black community so I'm not yeah it's horrible every time I read about a brother picking up a gun and shooting another brother but I've also seen uh, on a website like meet.org where they have a bunch of scientific experiences where they put a bunch of rats in uh, a closed confined space together or a bunch of chickens in a closed confined space together and then you watch the reactions of these animals they start turning on one another they start biting each other let me tell you something I, I, I once had a this premonition that I was going to raise some chickens and I was living in uh, Jefferson County and so I went and bought, I went to the hatchery and I bought like 400 little chicks, right? I had the heating lamp and I put them in a little uh, mesh cage and, and, and it was very hot in there and I got the instruction on how to raise these things and I thought I was going to do very well. Well, after about a week or maybe three or four days, maybe it wasn't even quite a week yet, I noticed that some of them were just pecking on the other ones you know they would seem a little bit tougher and they were beginning to peck 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 each other and then they start pecking on each other and I was like well, oh my god I couldn't stop them then they start pecking on each other until they die the the bigger ones would just peck on the smaller ones and you know you try to separate them put them in a different cage and then I would make three of them three little different cages then I separate them because I had the fat ones over here. I'm like, oh, because they kill each other. And I just bought just these little these little chicklings, and they're so cute. But then the weak ones I put in in the barrel. Guess what? They found a way to separate themselves as well, and they start picking on the the subculture of of that particular pen. And so no matter what I did, there were a bunch of them that were eight off. Until I had maybe something like, I don't know, maybe 30 something left out of 400 and something chicks. And it really taught me something. Because we can learn a lot from the animals in the animal kingdom. And that's why I love nature and being out in it so much. So I'm saying all this to say, once you recognize that you have a natural enemy, okay? And the natural enemy all through time has set up structures, components, and all types of robots. Uh, blocks for your destruction it it doesn't really take a road science to know that we need to have some different type of education about what we're up against okay and I think that's been the biggest problem uh, with black people we feel that oh if we don't say if we say something like that then something is wrong with us and oh we should all get along um, we can't just get along. Can't you see that? 
Because the minute you say you don't like something, you you through. The best thing to do is you shut your mouth and put up with anything I put out. Then we can be, we can get along. And so those guys that sit down at City Hall right now, like Alderman Willie Wade, and, uh, Alderman uh, Willie Hines, and actually I'm the only one I'm going to exclude out that bunch is Joe Davis because I like what that brother is doing on the international level, and I'm keeping my eye on him. But the rest of those people down there, and those two brothers in particular, they need to be, they need their heads bashed in, okay? So now, maybe y'all give me a case too, like he gave Mike McGee, and saying I'm threatening them. You don't hear me threatening them. I'm just saying they need their heads bashed in because they're already Tommy Toms and robots. Maybe if you hit them in the head, maybe they'll shake up their brain a little bit, and they can kind of see this thing for what it really is. Because they're not stupid. These are not dumb men. I mean, as far as their articulation of words and as far as their um, educational base, both of them are bachelor degree brothers. But there is a disconnect between them and uh, they own the uh, price may be, check may be. It's worth it for us, them, to solidify themselves and shut their mouth and nigga, y'all let what happened to you happen to you. I got mine, get yours. And that is what I have a problem with in this today and age and in this society and with us as a group of people. I am can't talk about specific my case right now because, um, in fact, I'm going to court two days from now. Um, but I can't really talk about any specifics. But what I will say is I will keep you all a, a posted about what's going on. And I want you to give me your feedback. I want y'all to help me. I want y'all to encourage me because I need your encouragement right now. Brother McGee needs your encouragement, whether you agree with him or not. This is not even the issue at this point. The issue is you living in a you, it's, it's, democracy is dead, and I can see this is like a totalitarian country. I mean, you you are have people that are being put in jail because of their political beliefs, or because they exercise their constitutional right to vote. Or because we feel that this Negro in place will represent the district better than this Negro right here because he got too many demands. So let's trump up some charges. Let's throw him in jail. Let's do the same thing we've done to Marcus Garvey, Denmark Vizi, Malcolm X. The list goes on and on and on. Haven't we learned? Haven't we understand? Don't we understand yet that we got to yeast be united? I mean, this is the worst, the smartest, and the sorriest slave I've ever seen. The, the modern slave of today, while he's so educated and technically advanced, he is afraid, he's a coward, and he's scared that he's going to be put in jail. Which I'm sure all of us take that risk of being there. I ain't never been to jail in my life. But I was there for them seven days going, oh Lord, I know what Daniel felt like. I know what Paul felt like. You understand what I'm saying? For all you Christians out there. I know what John the Baptist felt like. Oh Lord, I know what Jesus felt like. But if you want to know what that walk really feels like, then walk it. And walk it for injustice. Like you say, because if you had the heart of Jesus in you, there's no way in the world you could sit back and let all this injustice happen. And you just sit back behind your fat ass chair, okay, uh, in your comfortable confines. And watch all your people go down the drain and say, well, I ain't got nothing to do with that type of shit. <laughs> you know, we passed that. I, I, I have more faith in us than that. And if they can arrest me, I'm a musician. I, 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 I love to create music and to sing music and, and, and to be part of the universal family. But when I can't go out and pass out a flyer and, ex and, and, and exercise my constitutional right, without being arrested and that's about as much as I can say then you know that's a problem so what y'all gonna do are you gonna stand here and act like it ain't going on as long as it ain't happening to me because if you got that attitude when they come for you guess what there ain't gonna be nobody left till next time